Hello and welcome to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Anil Joshi. Today's topic is based on a radio physics, in particular CT physics and further particular the detectors in CT scanners that we are going to see today. So, today's topic is a simplified version of the detectors. The extensive and larger version of same lecture is available elsewhere. Please visit our website and YouTube channel, you will find it. Now, to start with is the disclosure, acknowledgement and disclaimer. We acknowledge with thanks from all those from where we got this material for the lecture. It, is, it has mainly come from the departmental source. We are using it for many years and it is there in our department since many years. Now, some material we have downloaded from the net which we have confirmed that is a royalty free. However, still we acknowledge them with thanks and start this educational lecture that is the radio physics in particular detectors. Now, first the introduction. The digital X-ray detectors called the transformation unit in a CT scan which is required to transfer the information you collect from the patient by the incident X-rays. Now, detectors called collect information according to the beam attenuation by the anatomic structure. So, at one end there is a source that is the CT tube, then is the body part and whatever is transmitted through the body falls on a detector. So, there it the here the process goes on by which the anatomical part of the body is reflected on the screen or projected on the screen or you can say it as the monitor. The entire detectors are situated in an arch or a ring like structure in the gantry. So, if you open the gantry, you will find that whatever is a type of machine, the detectors will be arranged accordingly. Now, these detectors we are going to see in this lecture are of which type. Now, let us continue with the introduction. Each detector measure the intensity of the transmitted X-ray radiation along the beam that is projected from the X-ray source, which is just now we have seen. Again, we are repeating it because it is important. There are reference detectors within the array that helps to calibrate the data and reduce the artifacts. Now, in addition to the main detectors, there are also reference detectors in the uh, tube. They are next to the routine detectors. What they do? They help to calibrate number one and they reduce the artifacts. So, they have got an important role to play when it comes to an image. Now, e efficiency of a CT scan detector depends upon, now we are generalizing the detectors. We are not going into the details of individual types, but what is expected? Expected is the holding capacity or stopping power of the detector material. So, whatever are the X-rays coming from the body must be absorbed, must be utilized to create an image. They should not leave it to pass on. So, this is one of the more impo most important structure is they should capture all the X-rays that is coming from the body. The scintillator efficiency in a solid state type of detectors is again the charge collection efficiency. Now, whatever is the charge that will be exchanged because of ionization or because of the material they are using solid state for the detector need to be transferred to the computer and monitor. Now, this has to have efficiency. By efficiency, even the minute changes they contribute to the resolution are important as far as image is concerned and that starts from the detectors. So, there stands the efficiency of a detectors. The geometric efficiency means the amount of space occupied by the detectors, collimators that are relative to the detector surface area. If the detectors are of too large capacity, what will happen is we will not be able to make a machine which has got better resolution by fitting more detectors. So, detectors should occupy minimum possible space, their weight should be minimum. They should have minimal weight, space, occupancy, etc. 
there should not be any scatter rejection whatever is coming to it should get totally absorbed to it that is as far as x-rays are concerned so everything that is coming will be utilized for the forming images the term describing element of the detector efficiency are capturing capacity now we are talking of the generalized uh, requirement or generalized efficiency of the detectors one thing is capture capacity this refers to the ability with which the detector obtain photons that passes through the patients so this is capture efficiency then is absorption efficiency this refers to the number of photon absorbed by the detectors and are dependent on the physical properties of the detector phase including thickness and material so what is the area exposed what is the thickness of it and by which material it is composed of it all decides what is the absorption capacity of that particular detector then is the response time refers to the time required for the detector signals to return to zero after the detector is stimulated by the extra radiation and is able to detect another extra event so it should be a fast in other word unless a one process is completed it cannot take into consideration second process so it should be it should have a least responsive time it should immediately process one and should be ready to receive another one now then dynamic range it is the ratio of the maximum detector signal measure to the maximum signal they can measure so this is the dynamic range now further going to the detectors here we are showing that one side there is tube then are the filter collimator and x-ray beam now all these things contribute to the image formation now when we talk of the detector a detector should get properly collimated a properly position a properly thickened x-ray beam and all that thing is done by all these uh, structures like a filter collimator and x-ray beam there are different lectures covering all these things do visit our website where you will get all the details of it now what are the types of detectors we have seen the generalized characteristics of the detector now we'll go to the individual types of detector now what are they one is ionization detector and second is scintillation detectors popularly called as gas detectors and solid state detectors now we'll come first to the xenon gas that is the gas detector because they were in earlier machines earlier machines had this type of ionization chamber and they were detecting the they were doing the role of detectors now detector array array are series of a highly directional ionized chamber so they have to be directed properly they have to be aligned properly they should be filled with a gas of high atomic number that is krypton xenon are the two popularly used gases and they, sub, they are subdivided into the separate detector by a tungsten separator this is all to efficiency this all increase their efficiency and they all attribute towards the characteristic or requirement of the detectors which we have seen earlier the x-ray ionization now what happens is whatever the x-ray passes through the body they ionize the gas and that produces a signal and that signal are displayed on the monitor now again the role of computer is also important here in fan shaped system a collimator is employed in front of the scintillator element to reduce the effect of scatter rays that we have seen just now before the beginning or mid of the lecture or beginning of this topic that there are collimator the role of collimator is to regularize or channelize the x-ray beam in gas detector array the chamber wall effectively serve as same purpose by acting as a collimator aligned with the position of the x-ray focal spot now because they are in circle and x-ray focal spot produces a fan shaped beam their alignment perfectly fits with it so that they can act as the collimator also and they can take all the rays that are coming to them this is self collimating effect of the gas detectors this exclude their application in ring detector based system since focal spot of the x-ray tube moves relatively in the detector element in which system in focal spot of the x-ray tube moves 
So, this type of system, this type of detectors cannot work. Anyway, these detectors are no more no used now. They are, you, they were used in the past. Now, what are the properties? Ionization chamber detector, lower detection efficiency, maximum up to 50 percent, but they were highly stable. Consistent sensitivity between the detector element, ionization chambers have been supported by solid state detectors and are no longer used as they are unsuitable for multi-slice scanners. So, there they are not used. You can see here, there is an entrance window and there is exiting signals. Now, they are septated. Now, you can see because of the septation, automatically they will act as a collimator also. Now, come to the solid, solid state that is used nowadays. In all the machines which you are seeing, we are using has got this type of detectors. Now, what are the properties of uh, solid state detectors? The original single slice scanner had one row of detectors. Now, all the scanners are multi slice and have 8 to 64 rows of detector depending on your machine design. There are generally 1000 to 2000 detectors in each row. Since they are small in size, you can afford to have more in number. Now, scintillation, solid state detectors, they have got high detection efficiency for X-rays in CT energy range. Then they are having high dynamic range. Then they have got narrow gap between active element that is good ge geometrical efficiency and they are fast responsive. They are low cost and they have got small physical size. So, more number can be fitted and machine can be made with more and more detector to increase the resolution. There is a solid scintillator layer that converts the X-rays into the visible light photons. The photodiodes then convert the photon input into the electrical signals. Then coming back to the other properties, they have got high detection efficiency more than 90 percent or almost 90 percent. High geometrical efficiency more than 80 percent. Small physical size of detector element most commonly used detector. Why they are most commonly used? Because of small size, more efficiency, then they can be fitted in more number, they are economical. So, all these things makes them more popular nowadays in the unit and especially because we want to make more slice machines, more specialized machines and quicker, faster machines. Here we can see the X-ray coming in, then there is a scintillator, then there is a photodiode that captures the visible light and gives it into the electrical signals which are in term shown on the monitors. Now, to conclude, both type of system are usually agreed or they are arranged in a series. Now, solid state about 1000 detector element or a ring with a more than element on the in case of system with a geometry. Now, this depends on the design slice, design uh, how many slice machine is and design types. Some commercial system use two adjacent rows of detector element in order to scan two slices simultaneously that saves your scanning time, faster machine, more slice machines. For scintillation based detectors, the most commonly used scintillator material have been cesium iodide that is CSI and cadmium tungstenate as well as ceramic scintillators employed rare earth oxides and oxy sulfides. These are the elements that are used in the solid state detectors. Now, critical parameters for CT detect scintillators is afterglow their behavior. Once the X-ray falls on it, once the signals are produced, they should not afterglow. That will create artifacts. Now, the afterglow leads to the measurement error near the tissues when the interface is more like air and bones or wherever the air is there, it, it is in minus, bone is in plus. So, there is a big interface. Now, at this stage, the afterglow creates a problem. Data correction schemes have been developed to add a compensate this first order effect related to the detector afterglow. So, that is usually compensated by as it is said by the computers. The compared to the rare 
gas ionized detectors the scintillation detectors usually have a lower geometric efficiency that is the ratio of active versus ineffective frontal areas which is however generally more than compensated for by the latter's higher quantum energy so these are the conclusive between two with that we are coming to end of lecture i thank you for giving me your valuable time there are more details on our website and our youtube channel do visit it if you like the lecture if you find it useful give it a like and you tell your friends who are interested in this type of knowledge there are more and more videos on our youtube channel and also in our website thank you goodbye and take care see you in next video